What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Oak Tree Football Channel, uh, and welcome back to another 2020 college football schedule breakdown and record prediction video. It's been a few days, but I'm finally back, and I'm going to be continuing doing some Big Ten schools. Today, I'm going to be doing the Indiana Hoosiers. The Hoosiers actually had a pretty good season last year, and they're a very interesting team. Uh, they were ranked at points in last year. Uh, and they didn't actually lose too much this season. So it could definitely be a pretty good year for the Hoosiers. One thing that will be changing for them, though, is Michael Penix will now be their full-time quarterback. He was technically their starter last season, but he had a few injuries, um, and he didn't play the full year. Payne Ramsey mostly played quarterback, but he transferred to, I believe, Northwestern. So uh, Michael Penix Jr. will be the full-time starter, and he can be very good if he's healthy. Uh, and he will also have a fantastic wide receiver, which is Wap Fillier. Fillier was one of the best wide receivers in the Big Ten last year. Should have another great year. Had over 1,000 receiving yards last season. The defense could have been a bit better last year, but I think it can maybe be better this season. But I just think that uh, this Indiana team can actually surprise a lot of people and can be pretty good this year. They went 8-5 and five last year, and they had the 57th best recruiting class in the country this season in 2029-2021. They started off with a very tough game on the road at Wisconsin. The Wisconsin Badgers are one of the best teams in not just the Big Ten, but in college football, really. I, I don't think of them as a playoff contender, but I do consider them close to a top 10 team. They're definitely really, really good, and... This is going to be a tough one for Indiana, and they'll probably lose. I mean, Michael Penix has been injured, so he'll be coming back this game. It's going to hurt him, especially with limited practices. If right after uh, his injury he comes into a tough game, it's a tough game, obviously, uh, against a very, very good team, and it's week one of the season. This is going to be really tough for Indiana to win, in my opinion, and I don't really see it happening. I think a pretty easy win for Wisconsin, to be honest. Week two, though, Indiana should have a pretty easy game against Western Kentucky. They should be able to win this one, and same in week three, where they play Ball State. So, week one is probably going to be lost, but week two and week three should be wins. And same in week four where they play UConn. Uh, UConn does no longer have a conference. Of course, they left the American Athletic. They're just not that good a team. This is a road game for Indiana, but I really do not think it matters. Uh, they should be able to win. So, they have an incredibly easy non-conference schedule. Should be able to win those three games. Uh, very easily, and it's great that they have three easy games because uh, Michael Penix, they can get him used to the game after having some injuries, and I think that's very important uh, for them, but they have their bye in week five, not a good place bye, not coming off a tough game, not going into a tough game, very poor place by, and it doesn't split your season in half, it's four games and eight games, not a good place by, definitely could be a lot better. Week six, they play Maryland, I don't think they should have a problem in someone, it's a home game, I do think Maryland got better this offseason with the, um, because they just recently transferred to get Talia Tagovailoa um, to his brother, but I still don't expect Maryland to be good that good this season, I I think him. I think he will help them out, make them a better team. But I just don't think they're that good at the end of the day. And I think Indiana should win this one pretty easily because they're at home. They're coming off a bye. They're coming off some easy games. Michael Penix will start figuring out the game even more at this point in the year. So I think it should be a pretty easy one for Indiana. And same in Week Seven where they play Rutgers. Rutgers just is not a good team. That is really the only way you can say it. They just aren't good. That's that. Um, they will not be a good team this season at all. On yeah, just that's all you have to say. This is a road game for Indiana, but it just doesn't matter. They're gonna win this game no matter what. Uh, week eight, they play Michigan State. This is an interesting game because Michigan State's a very interesting team because it could be pretty good this season, but it could be pretty bad. It was not the best off season for Michigan State. They're losing a lot of talent. I still expect they'll be okay. I mean. I don't know. I, I kind of feel like they'll be around the 6-6 six and six mark. I do think Indiana's better than Michigan State, but I could really see Indiana struggling in this game. I could see Michigan State uh, giving them a good challenge. This is a home game for Indiana, which is big for them, but I could actually see this game being a lot closer than you might expect, and I could even see Michigan State winning, honestly. And it's, it's a tough one to predict for me. It could really go either way, um, but... It could really go either way, like I just said. But week nine, 
It's going to be a very tough one where they play Penn State. Penn State is one of the best teams in college football with Sean Clifford as their quarterback. He's a pretty good quarterback. I think he can get, be- get better, but he's still pretty good. Uh, Journey Brown's a fantastic running back, very underrated in my opinion. Wide receiver's a problem, I think, but Pat Fryer is one of the best tight ends in college football. Uh, and all the defense, Micah Parsons is, in my opinion, the best linebacker in college football. I mean, Penn State is a really, really good team. And this is a home game for Indiana, but I don't really see them winning. I just think Penn State's too good a team. Um, and, I mean, I could see them making it close. They're at home for this one. I just don't see them winning, really. I think Penn State's too good a team. In Week 10, I just don't see them winning at all. Uh, at Ohio State, I don't, I don't think uh, Indiana's even close to how good Ohio State is. And this is a road game for Indiana. I just don't see it happening. Ohio State should be able to win this game very easily. With the talent they have, Justin Fields, a stacked wide receiver room. And it's still a good defense. Even though they are losing two of their best defensive players from last year, they definitely still a lot of talent on that defense. Ohio State's just going to be a great team this year. One of the best teams in college football, and Indiana's just not winning on the road. That's just not happening. Week 11, they play Illinois. Illinois is a pretty interesting team. I expect Illinois to be okay this year, maybe 6-6. Six and six. Maybe they can make a bowl. They're going to be an interesting team to watch. This could be a tough one for Indiana, a lot tougher than you might expect, um, because they're coming off an extremely tough game. Um... I do think Indiana is better than Illinois. This is a home game for them, and they should absolutely have Michael Penix figured out at this point in the year. It's going to be tough, though. I, I do believe this game will be tougher than you might expect, but I still think Indiana should win. I still think Indiana's the better team, uh, and I'm still picking Indiana, but I think it could be a pretty close game. Week 12, they play Michigan. Now, Michigan's a very good team, in my opinion. Michigan always is pretty good. I mean, I do sometimes feel Michigan's a bit overrated, but I think Michigan is pretty good. But the problem for them is quarterback. I just don't like what they have at quarterback. They need to figure that out, in my opinion, um, because I just I just don't think they have anyone that will really be able to get the job done and make this team a serious contender. They have, uh, who they, the players they have at quarterback can be good, but I just think they need to get better at quarterback before they can be a serious contender in college football. But Michigan's still a great team. This is a road game for Indiana. It's going to be very, very tough for them. And I think I'm, I'm going to go with Michigan in this one. I I mean, I don't think it's a guaranteed win for Michigan, but it should be. Uh, I, I think they absolutely will win. And it might be a bit close, but I, I still, I'm still picking Michigan uh, in this one. And then Week 13 ends. He's off at Purdue. This is an interesting game because Purdue is a pretty good team. I think they're very underrated. Um, they have Rondell Moore coming back this year. He's one of the best wide receivers in all of college football. So I expect Purdue to be a pretty good team, and I, I expect them to give a good challenge to Indiana. This game this is a game that could go either way, to be honest. Uh, it's one of the more interesting games of the season, one of the more under-the-radar interesting games. I think I'm going to go with Indiana. They're at home for this one, which is big for them. Would not be surprised if Purdue won, though. I just think this is a very interesting game. Could absolutely go either way. I'm currently picking Indiana, but I could absolutely see going to Purdue. So now, as I always do, I'll go through each game once again, and I'll give my prediction for I think will win. I think Indiana starts it off with a loss. I just think Wisconsin's too good. But I think they go on an easy three-game winning streak against Western Kentucky, Ball State, and UConn. After their bye, I think they easily beat Maryland and Rutgers. So that's a five-game win streak. And I'm actually going to have them losing to Michigan State. That's a bit interesting. It's going to be a tough one. Uh, I think they could easily win there, but I'm going to give them a loss. I think they'll lose to Penn State. I just think Penn State's a great team, and I think they'll lose to Ohio State. So a bit of a losing streak there after their winning streak, and then I think they'll beat Illinois. I think they'll lose to Michigan in Week 12 on the road, and I think they'll beat Purdue to have a record of 7-5 and five on the year. There's four games I think they'll absolutely lose. Um, maybe not absolutely for some of them, but most likely. Uh, I think they'll 100% lose to Wisconsin and Ohio State, and I think they'll most likely lose at Michigan and against Penn State. And then I think they'll split Michigan State and Purdue. I think they'll drop one of those games as their final loss. I could also see them dropping Illinois, but I, I'm going to give them a win there. Maybe they struggle a bit against Maryland because uh, maybe, Talia's, maybe Talia plays pretty good in that one, but I still expect to be a win. Worst case for me is 5-7, and seven, the losses, or the wins would be Western Kentucky, Ball State, UConn, Maryland, and Rutgers. 
Best case, probably 9-3 and three losses against Wisconsin, Ohio State, and then splitting Michigan and Penn State. Um, but I think 7-5 and five is a pretty good prediction for them. I think it's right right w- around uh, I think it's right around where it should be for them. Maybe they can go 8-4, and four, maybe they'll go 6-6, six and six, but I think this is a pretty good prediction for them. Um, so these are my thoughts on the Indiana Hoosiers for this year. What are your guys' thoughts? Tell me in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, and if you are new around here, feel free to subscribe for more NFL and college football content. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video.